Federal governments assist in planning, but generally these days uh, help the state governments to fund public transport. So it's really important that, you know, that, the, that the federal government do provide funds to support the states in, with such big projects. And that's why we've got our uh, federal member for Aston, Mr Alan Tudge, here tonight um, to tell us what he intends to do to move this project forward uh, sooner than later. Thanks, Alan. Oh, well, thanks so much, Mick, and thanks so much for organising this event. And clearly by how many people are here is just an indicator of how important this project is and, and how seriously people uh, want this project to go ahead. Uh, I just acknowledge my, my colleague, Kim Wells, the other guests up here. And, and also I know that um, uh, Father Kevin is here somewhere as well. I saw him coming in, who's the uh, the, the priest of this school and of, of this parish, and I just want to thank him and acknowledge him for, for letting us use his facilities tonight as well. Um, as Mick said, largely public transport issues are done, they're managed, they're owned by the state government, and that's basically still the case. I've always had an interest, though, in this particular project since I've been the member for Aston, which covers most of Knox, and for the last sort of seven or so years. And that's because when I'm, when I'm campaigning in this area, door knocking in this area, um, hanging out at, at, at Wellington Village, listening to people, this is typically the number one issue and has been for the entire time that I've been the federal member here. So I've always had an interest and always thought, what can, how can I push this along from a federal level? And I noted the feasibility study which, which Kim got the money for and the outcomes of that. And the outcomes, it said, well, first of all, we've got to make sure there's additional capacity on the Dandenong line and with the Melbourne Metro being done. That's now being done, both of those things. So we've now done that in terms of from a feasibility perspective. The second thing that I saw was an opportunity for the federal government to get involved was, was Malcolm Turnbull becoming Prime Minister. And he's really the first Prime Minister, at the, uh, first Prime Minister to put serious money into urban rail when previously it had largely been um, up to state governments to completely fund urban rail. And additionally, uh, not only is he committed to urban rail, but additionally he likes uh, seeing educational institutions connected to urban rail and using those as, as considerable economic hubs. And so I've been in the last sort of 12 to, 12 to uh, 24 months, and now that I'm a minister in Turnbull's team as well, thinking, right, there's a real opportunity here. So I've been communicating with the Monash University's Vice-Chancellor, Margaret Gardner, getting her support, and I've been talking to the members of parliament here, such as Kim Wells and the local council members, and getting their support and determining what the main pitch has been and Monash University is Australia's largest campus but not connected to the rail network. The bus line between Monash and Huntingdale station is the busiest bus route in Australia. So there's a clear case that that should be connected from at least Huntingdale to Monash and then from Monash out to here. Earlier feasibility studies have said that if we build the Monash Rail, so the build the Roeville Rail, it'll take the equivalent of a lane of traffic off the Monash Freeway. And we've been putting money into the Monash Freeway to expand that as well. So I've made a big pitch in the last 12 or so months, and I was absolutely delighted that this came off, because in this year's budget, as you probably know, we didn't promise money, but we committed almost half a billion dollars locked into the budget for this project. $474 million was committed into the federal budget this year. It is the first serious instalment of money to go towards the Roeville Rail um, in the history of this project. <laughs> now, now, does this fund the entire project? No, it doesn't. Um, but it is a massive instalment and a massive down payment towards it. And my hope now is that this has unstoppable momentum 
um, because of that massive injection of cash of half a billion dollars. Now, what are the next steps? The next steps, of course, is to do the very detailed planning work. Um, it's not repeating the feasibility study yet. It's not using up all the money, but it's $3 million worth of work, which will work at exactly where the route should go and the type of technology which should be used. And the state government will be undertaking that with some assistance from federal money. We've been very clear that we want to see heavy rail, not light rail. Now, clearly, we will have leverage by virtue of the fact that we're putting a big bucket load of money on the table. Um, and we hope that the state government um, will come to the table on that and recognise that, yes, this is what is needed, is heavy rail rather than light rail. Although I acknowledge that the, I don't think there's any ill will on behalf of the state government for suggesting light rail, it's just that it's a cheaper option. But we want to see, a lot, we want to see heavy rail, and that's certainly our, our commitment. So that's the next step immediately, is to do that detailed design work. Um, and it's an incredible announcement that Kim has made in terms of setting the land aside. Um, I was always pushing for that to be the next step, and so that's a great next step for that to occur as well. When we get the study done, um, then we'll be able to see exactly uh, what the next steps are from that as well. But again, I, I suppose I just repeat in relation to the federal money which we have announced. It's not a, it's not a promise, it's not an election commitment, it's, it's not in the never-never. It is a rock-solid budgeted amount of money, um, which of course a future government could overturn should they choose to do so. Um, but um, I hope that no government would ever try to, try to do that. From our perspective, that's locked into the budget and is. And, um, and I'll be continuing to campaign for more, is my commitment. And um, uh, if, uh, if there's one project that I can finish up my time as being a federal member of parliament in this area seeing completed, um, I'd like to see it being the Roval Rail project and you've got my commitment to continue to fight as hard as possible to get it completed. Thank you very much.